Well, good morning, everyone. Ah, it's so nice to see you here. Are you all ready to be absolutely overwhelmed and loved by your daddy God? Ah, we have had a wonderful week. How many are here from the leftover weekend or week? We have had a marvelous time in the Holy Spirit. So I encourage our own church family, if you haven't been watching online, to uh, go back and watch it. It was an, uh, I think we had a, a, just an amazing shift ah, in the presence of God here. Um, I can't remember what night it was. You know, all the nights blur together. But I think it was Thursday night uh, with Laura Woodley leading at one point, And there was just this uh, shift into the new. So get ready because I think our paradigm is about to shift. And I just welcome all you watching on the internet. Thank you for watching. May you be absolutely royally blessed. And we have our worship team and we have two special guests from our uh, Catch the Fire Church in London, England that are leading this morning. So Matt, come on, let's go. Bless you. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can 
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord?
And all the saints join in one song And all the streams flow as one river To wash away our broken
be lifted up be lifted higher be lifted up be lifted high just turn your affection towards the king Lift up your throne, son. Lift up your own son. Oh, oh,
your hair is white as wool. I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your hair is white as wool. I know that your voice sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. I know that your voice, it sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful I know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know your hair is white as wool I know that your voice, it sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful Yeah. 
He's good this morning. You're good, you're good, Lord. You're so amazing. We want to celebrate the Lord's table this morning in remembrance of Him. So, uh, Feel free to stay where you are or take your seats. But I, I want us to open up our hearts and remember his death until he comes. The passage is over in Luke chapter 22. I'll just read a bit. Verse 7, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you've entered into the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water, follow him to the house which he enters. And then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room and there make ready. So they went and found it just as he had said to them and they prepared the Passover. Verse 14, when the hour had come, he sat down with the 12 apostles with him. And then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I wanna give you just a bit of background on this. All through scripture, we have sacrifice. We have animal sacrifice, and, and many people are puzzled about that. Well, what's that all about? Well, it's pointing to the one who will come and be actually the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice <clears throat> that pays the global debt for sin. And we need to pay close attention to this. It, it is pivotal. It's it's a, it's a, you must understand this <clears throat> because there are many, many cults and divisions of Christianity and so on that perhaps would try to tell you that Jesus Christ is not God. He's a good man, a good teacher, an archangel, whatever, but he's not God. Now listen, we worship the Trinity 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three in one. How can three be one? Well, like an egg, for example, it has a yolk, it has the white, it has a shell, three in one. Oh, there's many things. One family, father, mother, little boy. Uh, three in one, Jesus, God the Son, comes to the earth to fulfill a most amazing biblical type. <clears throat> we talked, uh, I think yesterday or Friday, about how the sacrifice has been all through Scripture. We see it with Adam and Eve. Fig leaves won't do, they must be clothes of skins. Then we see the story of Abraham being told to offer his son Isaac. What's going on there? God wants to know, is there a man anywhere willing to do what I'm about to do? And Abraham said yes, and of course, Isaac was spared at the last minute. But the feast of the Passover is initiated in Egypt. When the final plague comes, uh, judgment is going to sweep through the land, the death angel coming, and they're instructed, take the life of an innocent lamb and put the blood over the lintel and the two side posts of the door of your house. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. What's going on? The innocent has died for the guilty. There has been payment made um, at a foundational legal level in the law, and it's acceptable because that animal sacrifice is pointing to the Son of God who will come and literally fulfill it. And so all of the Passovers all down through history, people have been killing the lamb and eating the bread and drinking the wine without realizing what it's all pointing to and what it's all about. So now here we are at the moment when history is being fulfilled and Jesus sits down with his 12 to eat the Passover, realizing he is that Passover lamb. And look what he says, with fervent desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Why did he want to do it so badly, do you think? Do you remember the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his son? It's love that's compelling him to go the distance and fulfill this. For I say to you, I'll no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. There's coming a final glorious banquet fulfillment of this feast. I'm telling you, you've got a great day in heaven in store for you. How many are excited about that? And if you've not been born again, if you don't know Jesus, I beg of you, don't leave this place until you get right with God and you're safely in the fold. Well, then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves, for I say to you, I'll not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And imagine now Jesus is realizing this bread is symbolizing his own body. And he, he's breaking it and he's saying, I'm allowing my life to be taken in my body to be broken. And he gave it to them. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. And so, now we have meaning coming into the Passover feast that they've celebrated for 1,500 years or so. And all of a sudden, he's applying it to himself, saying, this is my body. This is my blood. You know, this was a very important strategic moment in history. And I don't think the disciples really got it at the time, do you? Uh, he, he's saying, one of you here at the table is going to betray me. Verse 21, behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me. 
on the table. Friends, don't be one of those who betray Jesus. There's people who go to church, people who take communion, that end up selling out for a mere 30 pieces of silver or something, trading away the greatest treasure that they could ever, ever know. Turn to someone near you and say, don't you be one of those and neither will I. Truly the Son of Man goes that has been determined. Woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question themselves by which one it was. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Can you believe it? At this most important final Passover, the culmination of his life when he's dealing with the fact that, hey, I'm that broken bread, I'm that poured out blood. And the guys are arguing over who's greater. Imagine Peter saying, I'm greater than you are, John. I've healed more people than you have. I've preached more messages. I've done this, I've done that. I'm greater than you. No, you're not. I'm this and I'm that. And there's an argument going on right there. <sighs> Friends, don't be one of those jockeying for position like an orphan-hearted um, person who is struggling for position and, and, and trying to leverage something. Jesus says, hey, if you want to be great, learn to be the servant of all. We're gathered today to remember our king loved you and I enough to come and pay off our debt, our outstanding debt with the perfect one. The perfect justice of God demanded something be done about what you and I have done wrong. And seeing our hopelessness, Jesus stepped up and said, I'll pay their debt. See, that's why he's gotta be God. Because an archangel, maybe, I don't know, what would they cover? 10 of us? 20 of us? I don't know. What's an archangel worth? But Jesus paid the debt for the entire human race. Past, present, future. How can he do that? Because he's God the Son. That's how. And think of it. God himself coming down to earth to pay your debt for you. We have the elements scattered around the various corners of the room. There's, there's a table here, there's tables at the back. I'm gonna ask us to stand and one of your family, one of your party, go and, and bring enough for everybody. And we're gonna, we're gonna gather around and remember our wonderful king, our champion, our God, who came in the form of this lovely son to show us what the Father's love is like, to demonstrate the kingdom in power and love, but then to offer himself as payment once and for all for every lousy, stinking thing that every one of us has done and accumulated debt that we cannot repay. I want you to go and get these elements and come on back to your place and share this with one another. And as you do, say, break that bread and say, this is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. You were the reason. He did it for you. You made it necessary. Your sin made this necessary. And he was happy to do it, to rescue you. And then eat him. He said, if, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. It sounds a bit like, what? But yes, you're eating all that he is in the spirit. You eat of his spirit and you take it into your very being. And similarly with the cup, you drink 
his life, his life-giving blood. And it's healing and strength and forgiveness to you. So I want you to serve one another and say, this is the body of the Lord Jesus broken for you. Take it and eat it and remember what he has done for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For the new life that you give, we thank you. Likewise, the cup. Take it and drink it. Say to one another, the blood of Jesus shed for you. It's not merely a symbol, friends. It's power packed with the anointing. Alive in the spirit to wash you and cleanse you, set you free. Drink it and remember him. Father, your wonderful son has paid a debt that um, we could never, never pay. And so, Lord, this morning we ask that you would just come and appropriate, Lord, everything that you paid for. Lord, the blood has never lost its power. Ah, wow. And, Lord God, we just eat of your flesh and drink of your blood. Ah, and remember what you have done for us and the great price you have paid for our healing, for our salvation, ah, for our inheritance as sons and daughters of the Most High. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let healing flow all over this place. Just take your healing. One time in communion, when John was praying from the front, I was totally healed of a pain in my leg that I had had for a while. So, Lord, thank you. Even now, people are being healed of back problems, neck problems. Jesus' name. Thank Diseases you, bow to the blood of Jesus, the power of the yes, blood of Lord. Jesus. Dear lady came up to me this morning and said her pancreas has been healed. We had a word yesterday for pancreas. And Father, thank you, God, for resurrecting pancreas. Amen. <laughs> Diabetes bows to the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Every amen. disease, every arthritis, every eye problem. Come on, our God is bigger and greater. He's Come pouring on. out miracles, healing in this day, in this hour. And this is also what was paid for by the blood of Jesus. Yes, by the broken body of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Take it now. We take it now. We take it now. We take it now. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.